Welcome to Entrepreneur as Fest with your hosts, Sandy Calling and Monique Mall. We help business owners navigate the often complex world of system, organization, and structure. Each week, we bring you expert advice or real-life stories from successful entrepreneurs who have overcome the challenges of building and scaling a business. Whether you're just starting out or looking to take your business to the next level, this podcast is for you. So join us each week and let's grow your business together. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a review because it helps us reach more entrepreneurs like you. And today we're talking about streamlining your budget, talking about essential tools and apps that entrepreneurs may find helpful. So, and budgeting was something that I wasn't very good at for a long time. (laughs) And I know you're a queen of budgeting and I've learned a lot from you actually. (laughs) I don't know if I'd say I'm the queen of budgeting. My husband would disagree. But <laughs> what's all perception, right? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> so what do you look at? I yeah. was, for me, you were a queen because I sucked at it, but I found some tools that really helped me. So that was good. A lot of people are afraid of budgeting. I know that even I had some resistance around it, but you know, I started a business really young and that business was a cost of goods sold business. So I didn't have a choice. It was a corporation and we had to budget. So I learned at a very young age how to use accounting and how to do sales tax and how to do quarterlies and how to do payroll. I I didn't have a choice in the matter. I either had to pay someone a hefty amount of money, which by the way, I did in the beginning and it was a huge mistake. I could have easily done those things with a little bit of learning and understanding. It wasn't as hard as it needed to be. So I really want to start this podcast out by saying, if you're not doing a budget, every month and in your personal and or your business, please listen to this podcast. It is an essential part of business. And I couldn't agree more because I never used to do it because I didn't think I had to. I was married to a very successful man. You know, I honestly spent money here and there and I didn't worry about it. But then, you know, when things went south and I was on my own, I quickly realized, and it was actually really good because it kind of forced me into looking at it. And to be honest with you, it, I felt like before I felt the money had control over me and knowing where every cent, and I literally budgeted down to every cent, knowing where every cent goes is really empowering, really empowering. Well, it was for me anyway. It is. And it helps to take accountability for what you're doing in your life and and makes you look at what is necessary and what is not necessary. We live in a society of Starbucks where we go buy coffees because we want one. And sometimes what you want and what you need in a business are not the same. And this makes you take a hard look at those things because you can't argue with numbers. The numbers don't lie. They have no emotion. They have no opinion. They are fact. Mm -hmm. So it's being able to take on that hard truth that numbers don't lie, that numbers don't have opinions, that numbers just show you what is. Sandy, when you started, what was the very first tool that you used? And was it something that was free? Was it something that you paid for? So the very first tool I used was a spreadsheet and that didn't work. (laughs) And yes, it was free. And that didn't work because If you're handwriting it down, you have to be really diligent. I wanted to hone it down to where every pen went. I listened to podcasts. I read some books and I didn't want the money to power over me. So I really wanted to know. A friend of mine told me about an app called, it's called YNAB. So it's Y-N-A-B. Sounds like a wine app, but it's not a wine app. It's YNAB and it stands for (laughs) You Need a Budget. And it is paid. It is not free, but, and it it has a gazillion features that I probably don't use, but it has really, really ingrained in me that I know now where every single penny goes. And it links to all your accounts, to your checking accounts, to your savings accounts. You can hook your credit cards up to it. I started with just my checking account. And then I had a checking business account. And then I added the savings account. So I took it step by step. I didn't do everything at once because it was too overwhelming. 
But I really, really love the app and they have a free trial, which I did initially it changed everything for me. From that point on money didn't have me anymore. I was in control of my money. I love and it that. held a mirror up to me, right? Because it's like, okay, you have X amount of dollars to spend. You're going to allot them to, you know, X, Y, Z, to gas, to food, to whatever, to blah, blah, to business expenses. And like you just mentioned, the Starbucks, right? Or the, the coffee. Every day, if you do a cup of coffee, even if it's only like a cup of coffee, not even like a fancy schmancy, you're still looking at least $4 a day. Four times seven is 20, that's 80 bucks a month. That's, you know, 800, eight, 960 bucks a year. That's a thousand bucks that you could easily put into a travel fund or a rainy day fund. That's what I wanted. I wanted a travel fund. So I, at the time was really, you know, I had, I had to watch a penny, which this helped me with, but it also helped me save because instead of buying that four buck a cup of coffee, I put the four bucks in savings. Boom. That's and you great. see it right there in front of you and you see it. I love that. That's a great app. So why nav? Right? You need yes, a budget. You need a budget. And yeah. you do need a budget. So <laughs> yes. what I want to back up though, because I want to say this. So a lot of entrepreneurs don't have a lot of income coming in or they're just starting out. Here's the thing: a spreadsheet is a great way to start if you don't have any resources and you don't want to spend any money and you just want to learn the skill of it, especially even if it's a personal one. You can go on Google Sheets and type in budget or expenses, and you can get a spreadsheet that's going to help you to track your expenses. Like she said, one of the things that's a downfall for that, while it's free, you have to be very diligent that you're putting in everything and that you're doing it on a monthly basis. So I feel like even though it's free and it can be, it's good for, like you said, the person who's super diligent and very organized with their money already. It may not be the best choice if you're learning to create a budget, but it's not off limits. Because I was in business young, I actually had to use like a full suite. <laughs> I got a crash course and I don't even know that it exists anymore. It was called Peachtree Accounting. So think like QuickBooks. I no longer use that system. I am using a system called Wave Accounting. And I actually use the free version right now. And what I love about Wave is, again, it allows me to connect all my accounts. So I connected my checking, my personal. I have expenses for my business. And then I have a personal equity section where things that don't necessarily need to get categorized into business, but I still want to be able to track those items because I have two different accounts. And that is one thing that I want to stress right here. If you have a business, you should not be sharing your account that is personal with your business. I don't care if you take $100, go open up another account. It doesn't have to be a business account. It needs to be a separate checking account and you need to run all of your expenses through that account. You also need a separate credit card for your business. Do not mix and match. It will make your accounting very difficult. So I have a checking account for my business, a checking account for my personal. I have a savings account and I have two credit cards, one for business and one for personal. And they're all attached to my wave. If you're in the service business, one of the things I love about wave is it allows you to send out invoices for free and then attach those invoices to your payments, to your checking account. It's really great because then you can send those out to your customers. So if you're billing, it also runs a lot of P&L reports, a lot of which is profit and loss. It lets you look at your cash flow. It does all of those things like any major accounting program and it's for free. It is a really good program and I highly suggest it. I know other people that are in business that do high volume of sales, but they're an entrepreneur and they're a solopreneur and they have employees. They do it all through Wave. It, it has a paid version and you can hire someone to help you set it up. And there are a lot of tutorials around it, but it is a really good way to have a complete system. Um, if you're already a little bit familiar with budgeting and you just want a way to track your expenses and stay on budget, it doesn't give you like a monthly breakdown, like maybe YNAP does, but it does help you to track where your money is going. I, I would say it's similar to QuickBooks and maybe Mint. I've had friends who've used it, but I've heard yeah. that they've all migrated to Waves. I just thought I'd try it and I absolutely love Wave. 
You just prompted a thought about YNAB as well. So yes, you can do all the reports and all that, what Monique talked about. But what I really love about it, they have a great Facebook group. For those people that are struggling to budget or that are new at budgeting or are looking at goals, they do these little free challenges in the group just to hold each other accountable. Their customer service is phenomenal. And for year end, for tax purposes, you can also download the reports that, you know, different expenses that you've had for write-offs. And so that's all included. It is not free like WAVE. I pay it yearly and it's automatically deducted. And for me, it just works. You know, everybody's different. Everybody has to look at it. That's why I'm glad they have a free trial. So you could see if it's something that works for you. And one of the other things that both of us have used, it used to be called TaxBot, but now it's called Hurdler. And that was actually the first one that I used in my network marketing because I just Mm -hmm. wanted to track expenses. And it's great because it has an app and you can take a picture of your receipt. So you have an electronic version of your receipt. And all it does is really track your expenses to hand over to your accountant. And if you're starting out, you just need something really to track your expenses especially if like you're a network marketer or you're a coach, if you're just looking for something like that, we both liked Hurdler a lot. It was a great app. It was very simple to use. It is a paid app, but it really just did what we needed it to do. And what I like about it is also tracks your miles. So if you're going somewhere, it tracks mileage. And oftentimes, you know, we can write it off, you know, trips. I actually still have that just by default, but I do need to just, you know, get rid of it because like (laughs) it was tax bought and then I got YNAB and I kind of forgot about it. So yeah, thanks for reminding me. (laughs) 10 bucks a month I don't need to budget for and I can put it elsewhere. Exactly. Exactly. Because that's 120 bucks a year, right? And 120 bucks a year is 120 bucks. Yeah. And I think people forget that. You don't think it's a lot. One of the things that's great for budgeting is it does make you look at your profit and loss and it makes you look at what are you using? Do you really use all the subscriptions that you've signed up for? Maybe you signed up for a group and you forgot and you're paying $10 a month. and Or maybe you have a service that you're not really utilizing and you can negotiate. You know, Maybe you're going to look at your phone bill and see if it's a negotiable. So it's knowing what you're putting, where you're putting your money. I think that brings up a really great topic, especially for you newbies out here. (laughs) There is a time in your business when you start to make money and you don't realize that 33%, if you're not taxed as a corporation, needs to go in a little savings account. (laughs) And the reason Mm -hmm. is, is because come first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, you have to send Uncle Sam that income tax. And that is a 33% income tax. I think it's 33 or 34%. Mm -hmm. And so I know a lot of people that they didn't do that. Let's just say you make $40,000 in your business and you're spending as much as you're making. And then all of a sudden at tax time, you have like a $6,000 bill and you can't pay it. So make Mm -hmm. sure that you're looking at all of those things. There are calculators out there on the web that'll help you calculate all that information, Mm -hmm. have it where you're putting aside that money and you know that it automatically comes out because that's not money that you get to spend. That's money that if you earn, you need to put aside to pay Uncle Sam. (laughs) You know? And that's a great point. I actually have in my wine app, I have one category taxes. And and it is important because I didn't always do that. And it was a lesson learned. And when suddenly they say you owe us $6,000, you're like, what? And then it's like a big surprise. I suggest people do it quarterly. If you're going to be paying taxes, split it up to the four quarters. And that makes you also stay accountable. I I remember a time, Sandy was crazy when I had my retail business, I had five sales tax. I had five income taxes and I had five federal taxes I had to deal with on a yearly basis because of the nature of the business. Every Monday was accounting day. And that's the other tip that I could give. Listen, I don't love accounting. Okay. I'll be really Mm -hmm. honest. I don't love doing it, but at least once a month, I'm looking at my numbers, if not twice a month or once a week. As your business goes, you need to be looking at where your money's going. And it doesn't hurt to do the same thing in your personal life because guess what? What you do with your money in your personal life is going to carry over what you do with your money in your business life. And if you don't get them both in line, you're going to have problems. So make sure that you are keeping track just as much as your business expenses, your personal expenses, so that you can stay on track for the year and 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 make sure that you're organized. 
And you know what's funny? I actually do it weekly. I do it on a Monday morning, just out of habit, just to see, because if it gets too far, I've let it go for a month and then it was off. And it's like, I'd rather just do it. And there's something so satisfying when you see your checking and both accounts or credit cards completely match up. It's like, oh, there's something so satisfying in that for me. Reconciled. um, I know. Right. And it's so, very uh, easy with mm-hmm. these apps because it's all automatic and you don't forget anything. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing that's really great about a lot of these apps is it automatically just dumps into yeah. the program. So you're not yeah. having to worry about, oh, did I put this in when you can categorize it? The other one that I think is out there that I don't know a lot about, but a lot of people like is called Zero. Zero is mm-hmm. a little bit of, I think, a mix of what you have and what I use, but it is a paid version of it. And I know a lot of people love that as well as an entrepreneur. I personally think that once you hit small business and you're looking at payroll and you're maybe a a bigger entity, you want to look for a more robust system like wave the paved version or QuickBooks. You know, you're not going to be able to run your bigger business probably on hurdler. Make (laughs) sure that as you grow, you grow. I also think it's really worth the money to hire a CPA, a tax person, at least to help you get started, take some time and really concentrate on learning the basics of accounting for your business. And there's so much free information out there via YouTube. Get educated, read some books and understand what budgeting should look like for you. It's really empowering to know because I know a lot of people that saying there's not enough There's more month than money or something like that, especially starting out as entrepreneurs, right? And I think knowing really where every penny is going and that you're in control of your money is just a mindset shift. It was for me anyway, and very, very empowering. Any other tips to wrap it up? No, I don't think so. I think those are like some of our favorite apps right now out there. If you guys have any suggestions for apps, please drop them in the comments. We're always open to suggestions from our viewers because, you know, we don't know everything. Please subscribe, (laughs) share and comment so that we can help more entrepreneurs get organized and rock their business out. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.